In this video, I'm going to go over some of the recent experimentation I've done with thermal electric generators. I have been wondering for some time if it would be possible to capture the random fluctuations of the background ambient temperature and utilize that to power small devices. The first test was just to see if I could get any usable energy out of this using the differential between the body heat from my hand and the background air temperature. I was really impressed with these initial results. This worked so well for powering the LED that I decided in the future I definitely want to make a flashlight project around this effect. I think it'd be really cool to have a small flashlight that you just pick up in your hand and it just lights up, no batteries needed. All I'm using here is a heat sink attached to the thermal electric generator. Between the generator and the LED, I have a bipolar voltage booster to step up the voltage. It's a very simple configuration. I will share the parts list for this simple flashlight type configuration here in the video description as well as over at lasersaber.org. While all this flashlight research is really interesting, what I really want to go over here in this video is this module that I designed that allows me to capture the random fluctuations in the background temperature and convert that into usable energy. The basic design idea is very simple. I start by using this white aerogel insulation to provide a good barrier between the outside environment and the internal aluminum core. Next, I glue on the heat sink. This is what will allow us to capture the changing environmental temperature fluctuations in contrast to the more stable insulated internal core. I then added another layer of 3D printer bed insulation around all of the white aerogel insulation. I then sealed this up with a few layers of tape to make a nice airtight, well insulated seal. The last step was to 3D print an ABS enclosure to keep all the delicate internal parts safe. Everything fit perfectly and it was time to connect it up to my multimeter to see if it was outputting any power. You can see the voltage climbing on the capacitor as we're capturing the difference between room temperature and the well insulated internal core. The environmental fluctuations in temperature always affect the heat sink much more quickly than they do the well insulated core. The core lags behind by many hours and it's this differential in temperature that we're seeking to capture here. After some more testing, I decided to reduce the size of the heat sink. This will increase the time that there's an offset in temperature between the inside and the outside of the device. So it's working. I brought this from inside the house to the outside where it's colder and it works in the cold direction now. So I've got the bipolar part of this working pretty exciting. When I brought this out, the uh, LED was not lit and the supercapacitor was uh, discharged to a level where it wasn't lit at all. So really neat to see that thermal differential generate energy in both directions now. All right, I'll keep working on this. Okay, so I'm checking one hour later and the LED is still lit. It's still just blazing away out here. So that thermal mass in the core an hour later, still producing energy from the differential. Okay, so it's been two hours and this is still lit up here. Two hours after I brought it out from the house to the cooler outside weather. And there's obviously still a differential between that insulated inside core and the, uh, the little fins up there on the top. So it'll be interesting to see how many hours this thing stays lit. Okay, so it's been six hours and the LED is still on out here. So that's pretty amazing. That means that insulated um, aluminum core it still has a um, difference in temperature from the outside uh, air temperature around it. And because the temperature fluctuates through the day, it'll be interesting to see if this LED stays lit uh, through the night into tomorrow. So just monitoring this six hour mark. Okay, so this is running a lot longer than I thought it would. Um, it's been running for 13 hours now, going into the night. So very interesting. I kind of expected, you know, that the LED would be on for a few hours and then drop the voltage on the super cap. Um, because when I brought it out here, the, the LED wasn't even on. And today hasn't had a really extreme temperature change. It's, it's just been a normal winter day. So we'll check it in the morning, see if it's still lit in the morning, but here we are 13 hours in. Okay, so it's the next morning and you can see the LED is still lit. So it made it through the night. It'll be interesting to see if the uh, fluctuation temperature from night to day um, 
keeps this thing lit for another day. I'll check in on it again later. So, just got back, uh, went on a trip over the weekend. Got back and the LED is still on, so very cool. Um, I'll have to calculate how many uh, hours this is, but definitely awesome. So this thing stayed on day after day, week after week, month after month. Um, I don't want to give the wrong impression. It wasn't on nonstop all the time. There were some rare occasions where the uh, temperature was static over a long enough period of time that the inside core was able to uh, sync up with the outside temperature. But in general, this thing was lit all the time. Now it's important to keep in mind that we were not capturing the full amount of usable energy because this LED was essentially a drain off for over voltage protection on the supercapacitor. The bipolar voltage booster has a maximum output of 10 volts, which is far higher than the supercapacitor's three volt maximum. So the LED was really there just to keep it from overcharging. So there really was a lot more potential usable energy uh, than we see being demonstrated here. I have a project on my workbench that I think this will make the perfect power source for. Alright, let's all keep experimenting. Talk later. Bye.